Hey, this is Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. Wanted to give you guys an idea of an options trade going short on Goldman Sachs on a 30-minute time frame using the uh, entry signals on the black box breakout indicator in conjunction with some confirmation in the uh, multiple time frame dot cloud. It's part of a package that we offer here at uh, Trade the Fifth. So in this particular case, um, I've actually coded up uh, you don't need this, but for my own uh, purpose for the video, I c coded up a cloud signal uh, on the two-hour time frame. So looking at a 30-minute time frame, this pink signal is the cloud that comes with the indicator. Um, just for clarity on the video, I've added a two-hour cloud here to show uh, kind of the condition that Goldman Sachs is in. Obviously, it's in a downtrend. And it looks like, uh, you know, it's found um, resistance at the cloud and it's coming back down again. On the 4th of December, I noted a trade that came up on the 30-minute uh, signal for a short. And it was a signal that I had been stalking as a potential for an entry to go back short in Goldman Sachs after a trade I had prior closed. So <clears throat> I'm using the on-demand uh, indicate. Uh, capability of thinkorswim uh, it's a little bit difficult to go back in time and, and get all the data that you would uh, normally look at for options but I was able to uh, in this particular case they do have some data for uh, backwards in time for Goldman Sachs to show you the signals as they're coming up and as you can see here on the 4th of December um, we, we put it in a new low we came up to the two-hour cloud and you can see that by the dots here in the blue this is the two hour time frame row here um, and you can see this blue is indicating that the price is coming into the two hour cloud and you can see where it goes red here in this particular dot it's starting to come back out below the cloud and down into the 30 minute cloud which is this top row here <clears throat> and for me that's indicating you know another uh, good short had a big gap down had a pull back to the cloud and it's coming back down through the cloud here and for me I was looking to go short and noted this signal forming on the 30 minute time frame <clears throat> with a uh, short entry of 186.82 and a stop loss of 188.74 which is up here um, so I'm going to go to the option chain and what I'm looking at uh, you can get an idea of the expected move for me this is going to be a short term trade I, I could have looked at a longer term trade but uh, Given the way the market has been going lately, um, knowing right now Goldman Sachs has got some negative news and banks in general are, are doing poorly with the flattening of the yield curve, uh, had a lot of reasons to want to continue to be short, in particular in Goldman Sachs. And really what I looked at was uh, the expected move for 10 days. The, the data is not here for Think or Swim. There would usually be an expected move number here, but you can pretty much figure it out by looking at the pricing of the straddle which is the sum of the puts and calls uh, here bid price is about uh, I don't know 350 here and it's about 320 here so about six dollars and seventy cents for the expected move uh, and I'm looking at a short entry um, about 186.82 and what I ended up looking at was the 185 180 um, you know a, a seven dollar expected move six dollars and seventy cents ish um, my trigger is another dollar or so away from me here uh, what I started looking at was this 185 180 and should I get a trigger of this short entry on my chart I would take the 185 180 uh, put spread for short and on a 30 minute time frame I'm looking to be in it a few days maybe go for a double uh, or something on that order and uh, get a sense for where price is moving so as I uh, start the movement here um, and in this on-demand uh, indicator or uh, condition or state you can put in think or swim you know I've set it back to December 4th it's 1138 in the morning East Coast time and I'm looking at uh, real-time price changes here uh, of all that data that's recorded on the thinkorswim servers I'm just going to speed it up a little bit by jumping forward I think this jumps about 10 minutes uh, time forward every time I click this or so 
and get a sense for where we're going here. Uh, continue to move forward. I'm going to jump ahead again. You can see the price is jumping around a little bit here. 11.59. Wait for this to paint some data because it's buffering the data. Here we go. And still not at my trigger point. Although it is getting a little bit closer. If I remember correctly, it does do a little jumping around and then it does fly down here. It's going to jump ahead again a little bit. Bring the data up here. Oh, I think we hit the trigger. So I'm going to have to go back a little bit in time. It's going to be very difficult to get this exact. I'm just going to pause the video here for a second and uh, try to get it a little bit closer so I can do the trade entry. Hold on a minute. All right, folks, <clears throat> I was able to get it uh, right about at the entry here. And I'm going to go look at, um, so this would be an enter signal going below the entry point of the black box breakout indicator. You can see all of our multiple time frame uh, signals show that we're below the cloud. Uh, I've got the top four rows in red, which gives me the square. And I'm, you know, given that I'm below the cloud on all those time frames, I feel confident of looking at this particular trade. So as I said, I uh, ended up looking at a 185, 180. About 10 days out, I expect to be in this trade a, a few days um, if required. And We'll see what we need to do to manage it from there. But I'm going to buy a put spread, 185, uh, 180, which is covers my expected move uh, for the short strike. A dollar 34 for that trade. The maximum profit is the width between the spread of five dollars less what I paid. So I have the potential of making uh, three dollars and sixty six cents um, with a risk of a dollar thirty four per contract uh, let's say I put on five contracts and I'm gonna send that out and as soon as I start this up I should get a fill on that I believe so I should be filled in that uh, train if I look at my monitor tab Yes, I got a fill. So now I own this Goldman Sachs uh, put spread here. Let's see if I can turn that on, give an idea of the profit and loss on that trade. <clears throat> now, what I'm going to do is just advance time forward uh, a couple days because, you know, as I showed when we started this, uh, Goldman Sachs did but continue to go down. Um, I'm going to enter this uh, another day ahead and you can see on uh, near the close of this day uh, let's see we're on the fifth which is here looks like the data hasn't caught up yet on this one data we did end up on that day going below the one ATR uh, range of the of this uh, on the trade we ended up uh, a little bit of profit here if I look at I paid a dollar 34 it's already up to a dollar 90 I would typically look if this got to a double about 260 I would take off probably two or three contracts and book some profit 
and then let let the rest run uh, as a runner and manage the trade uh, for a potential triple, or uh, you know to you know 100 percent, 150 percent on the second half. Let me look going another day forward. Let's see if I can get this to work. Sometimes this uh, on demand tends to be quite a bit behind. So now we're on the six, and we have continued. Uh, so our entry was here, and we have continued down now through uh, the sixth of December, and we're down in this area. If I look at uh, midday, we have already made a double. So I would look at uh, taking off. Uh, let's see if I can do this. Never tried this, but uh, I'll take off three contracts 257 okay that closed I now have two contracts left I've made a double on the trade so far and if I let this continue forward I think we get a little bounce in Goldman Sachs and it has con it will continue heading down. Let's see, I'm still buffering data. Just going to move it up to Friday. There we go. So we did get a move up. We hit the thirty, um, the thirty-minute cloud. Another resistance point. Another. Potential short entry, aggressive entry would be just breaking the cloud low. You can see we only had one uh, time frame where we had a close in the cloud and right back down again. If I look at the value of this spread, uh, it's now approaching $3. Uh, maximum is 5 uh, This trade, I would typically close it on a Friday. Um, I wouldn't carry it through the weekend. Um, just because I don't want to take risk of, you know, like Trump news with China or something that's going to move the market up. So we're in uh, on a Friday here, and I'm looking to potentially close this trade very close to now. We're already at a one ATR move for the day. And I'm going to probably look to manage this, um, see if we can break through this low on a bigger move for the day. Um, but more or less, I'm looking to close the trade. I'm not going to go through all the detail here. I think you get the idea. I'm already in uh, my my remaining two contracts are already more than a double. 260 would be a double. I'd be looking three to 350 maybe uh, to close this. And if it comes back to a double of about 260, I'll probably just look to close the trade uh, there as I manage it. But the bottom line is what I was showing here is how you can use the indicator to, to get into setups to make an option trade on a relatively weak stock. And uh, in this particular case, uh, pulling off a double or more in a Goldman Sachs short trade using options. Hope that helps. Take care, guys, and uh, have a good weekend.